Yo, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Moto Stop Show right here in our beautiful studio, Big Deal Productions, in wonderful Jacksonville, Florida. Man, man, oh man, oh man, oh man, I don't even know where to start. Uh, probably with, that's a wrap on the 2017 series, uh, and so there's really not a whole lot to talk about this week. Uh, if you watched the race, you've probably seen it was pretty boring and just some motorcycles riding around around Vegas, you know. Probably been more fun to go to uh, to the Las Vegas Strip and gamble your money away. Who are we kidding? What amazing effing race that was. Holy shitballs, it was amazing. And we're going to break it down. we got a lot to talk about tonight. we got to talk about the 250 wrap-up. we got to talk about a brand new 250 title. we got to talk about... A back-to-back title winner. Um, we're going to talk about the 450s. We're going to talk about our Grind MX Rider of the Week. We'll see if you guys picked the same rider for the Grind MX as we did. we got to talk about our Plots MX Training Tip of the Week, our Damien Plots in-house resident. Hopefully he's going to jump on because maybe he can give us some insight to what's going on with the maybe the, the thinking, the logic, the game planning, that happened in Las Vegas Finals. We're gonna jump into it. We're gonna start talking about two, 2017 Monster Energy Supercross Las Vegas Finals. You are the Moto Stop Show. We know who you are, the man behind the screen. You guys can't see it on the screen. Well, maybe you can, but uh, it says, I am the Moto Stop Show right there from the Moto Stop Show. My boy, Bobby Williams. From Pro Action Suspension, Bobby, I'm a little mad at you. Uh, before we jump into here, I got to tell a quick story. I went down to Dade City and I brought my Arena Cross backup bike, and I'm like, "Oh, I'll have Bobby hook it up and adjust it real quick before." And then we're sitting there, and Bobby's not there, and I'm like, "Where's Bob?" Never mind. I understand. Bobby's not coming. So, uh, yeah, I need to get you to uh, to look at my bike a little bit, Bobby. Next time we see each other, so get that Pro Action going on there. Six people, we're climbing. Can I get seven, seven, seven? How about eight? How about eight? We need to see eight, eight, eight. I can't see who's coming on. There we go. Now we're getting there. All right. So we're going to jump into the 250 Supercross finals here at Las Vegas. What an amazing race it was. I mean, probably the best race I've ever seen in my entire life. And I want to see all you guys' comments down here. So let me know what you think as we walk through here. First of all, we got to start right there on the top of the podium. Adam Sensorilla. What a incredible ride. Now, it's going to be overshadowed, and you're probably not even going to remember it because of what happened in the back of the pack, but AC right here from Florida, not far from where we're at. Port Orange, Florida is where he resides. I think his parents now actually own a little home out in New Smyrna, but an amazing ride. Two wins on the, the season for that kid. So we got to take a step back and think about Adam Cincerello's career in a whole. You know, 2014, I believe, is when he came on. Jumped out, he won 50% of the races that he competed in. He went three out of six winning and then got destroyed, okay? Uh, When I say destroyed, I'm talking about body parts after body parts after body parts. I'm not talking about destroyed on the track. He literally got destroyed with his body. So after many, many series passed, not able to race, he uh, came back healthy He made it through a whole series. Not only did he make it through a whole series, he was second in your points this year. Now, that is another thing we got to talk about because nobody's seen it. Spicer Frankie, what's up? We got Poi Dog on here. We see all you guys coming in. Uh, Don't forget, as we're going to go through tonight, we're wrapping up by 8 o'clock because we got to be off here and jump over to the NDA Action Sports Weekend Race Recap with our resident viewer right there, Poi Dog himself. He's probably going to have this guy, you may have heard of him, uh, Paul Paul Fleming or something, I, somewhere. Yeah, you may not have heard of him, but if you have, he'll, he'll be on there with Poi Dog. But he's just the sideshow. Poi Dog's the real main attraction over there, okay? Don't get it twisted, even though we love Paul. All right, so back to Adam Cincerilla. What an incredible series and season for that young kid right there. And exactly what the doctor ordered as he comes through and he finishes out a full season and he's healthy as he's getting ready to start his uh, 250 outdoor hunt. And he will be a title contender, I truly believe, in that outdoor series. We're talking about the Amsoil Pro, the Lucas, is Amsoil or Lucas? What is it this year? 
I think it's the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Series. I think so. I think so. Okay. We're going to go with that anyways. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Series. It sounds good in my head, so hopefully it sounds great in your head right there. And Poy Dog says right there, starting at 830 just for you guys. Hey, I appreciate that, Poy. And sorry, as you know, uh, we don't normally like to do it on the same night as you do. Unfortunately, I had meetings in Orlando all Monday and Tuesday, so uh, I couldn't, couldn't do this on a Tuesday night. So here we are, but we're going to knock it out real quick. All right, so let's jump to it. Let's talk about our 250 East title champion, Zach Osborne. I want to see in the comments what you guys think about his ride. Down in the first corner, the last person to come around that corner was Zach Osborne, the number 16. I know if you're like me and you were watching it, you wrote him off. You thought Zach Osborne was done. How could he ever win the title when they're in Las Vegas and the, the heat is up, the battle's on, the pressure is put there for Joey Savacci, Jordan Smith, who, not for nothing, but got damn good starts. How is Zach Osborne going to do it? Well, I'll tell you what he did. He never gave up. And speaking of never giving up, stay tuned for our Plots MX tip because we're going to talk about that here shortly. And we're going to talk about that, Damien. He got fined. Most of the people might not know that on there, but I want to know what you think of this. So as we're talking about the Zach Osborne ride of a lifetime, you may have seen the last lap as he comes through. He makes that left-hand corner. There's a Kawasaki sitting there, and all you guys know that I'm a Kawasaki guy because Kawasaki is the best bike. You, you probably know that. Um, so he comes in, and he makes a very aggressive pass. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was aggressive, but... It was deserving. It is the last corner of the last lap for a championship. He takes Joey Savacci down. He goes on. He wins the championship. The AMA, the FIM, because there was an official protest, goes back, and they fine him $7,500. Now, he's still the title champion. He's the East Coast champion. $7,500 fine. I want to see in the comments, do you guys think that's a okay fine? Dave Freeze right there comes in. He says that fine was BS. And in case you guys don't know what BS stands for, I'm going to go ahead. It's bullshit. Okay? It was bullshit. And, and here's the problem. As I keep seeing you guys' comments come in, we're going to talk about them, but I got to give you my opinion of why I think it was crazy and ludicrous there. Um, now, I am an AMA member have been for many, many, many years, okay? There's a lot of great stuff that the AMA does. Um, calling penalties and assessing penalties on pro supercross races are not one of them what they do good. They do it horrible, to be honest with you. If you just go back and, and think about what was had throughout the 2017 series, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys could think of a few instances where somebody was blown out. Derek Morris right there says, I think that was BS. I bet if the roles were reversed, Savachi would have done the same thing. And Derek, to what you just said, Savachi said that on the podium or in a press release, not the podium, excuse me, in a, in a press release that he put out or an interview afterwards. So I agree. And, and just like Dave Freeze right there says, the AMA is, has no consistency at all. 100% correct. Because just go back, was it two races ago? How about Josh Grant with Malcolm Stewart? That hit was just as hard, maybe even harder, because here's the difference. Zach Osborne rode out. Zach Osborne didn't wreck. Now, I know in the Josh Grant-Stewart situation that Grant fell down, uh, you know, about three bike lengths away. But it's still the same instance, Okay. Eric Bellany said 7500 would buy a nice kit. Um, yeah, well, I, I promise you, he's not hurting for that $7,500. I'm sure the team is paying that for him, so it's not even coming out of his pocket. And with what he won in the title, I'm guessing probably four or 500000 It's not uh, – it, it, it was chump change. I'd pay $10,000 to make 500000 all day long. That's good investment on your money. So great job by Zach Osborne, even if he got to find $100,000. You know, you make five hundred, you spend a hundred. Call it a good day. Damian Plotz, 
AMA is like progressive government. They make you believe that they've got you covered. <laughs> oh, it's not like Allstate. You're not in good hands. That's for damn sure, okay? Um, so, <laughs> Damien got me all sidetracked there. Lost my train of thought. So the, the fine was put down. Um, Zach's not talking about it. Zach, you know, uh, and probably wisely so, is staying out of it. But I, I, I mean, what the hell is the AMA thinking? How could you even think that it's going to be okay to do a, a $7,500 fine? You know, in that race, there was other instances, just that one race, where there was riders that hit people just as hard. How about Zach Osborne pushing uh, Adam Censorella off the track? Practice. We're not talking about for a championship. We're talking about for practice. I think it was practice number one. It wasn't even the last practice of the day. They still had more to go. Joey Savacci and Adam are hitting each other in the corners just as the same as Osborne did Savacci. So there was no penalty there. There was no fine assessed. What in the hell... I wish somebody, maybe somebody's on here watching from the AMA, please chime in and tell me what the hell you're thinking. Because we don't know as fans, as spectators, it is a guessing game what's going to be had out there with the penalty. So, all right, I'll get off that soapbox. Man, I didn't mean to ramble on for about 10 minutes about that, but it was good stuff right there. All right, so Zach Osborne, what an incredible ride by that young kid, all the way from the back of the pack to the front and to take home, I mean, that is just heart determination and pure grinding right there. I mean, so speaking of that, we, we, like we say every week, we try to pick a rider that stands out in our head to pick for our GrindMX.com Rider of the Week. And I couldn't think of a better one than Zach Osborne. So Zach Osborne is our GrindMX Rider of the Week. And if, if you don't know why, just go back and watch the 250 main event and you'll say, I understand 100%. So... From the back of the pack, that guy, when he picked his bike up, had no intention of winning the title. Didn't know how far he was going to get ahead. Did he care? Absolutely not. He didn't lay down in the corner like we've seen in previous races from other title contenders, which we're going to talk about. He was back up on his bike within seconds. He was back off running. Even though he was squirreled out in some of the rhythm sections, he about looped it in the whoops or uh, swapped out in the whoops section. He kept his head down. He grinded all the way to the front of the pack. When he seen Joey Savacci, he did what he had to do to make actions happen. Therefore, Zach Osborne, the number 16, the rock star Husqvarna team, is your 250 East title champion. And I, I couldn't be more stoked. I was, obviously, I'm a Kawasaki guy. You know, Joey Savacci, I'm not, I'm not a fan, not, not a dislike fan. I, I think truly fans... I become fans of riders when they get in the 450 class and they start to develop and progress and really come into their style. So Joey, you know, I think is, although he's got a style of his own, I like him, but I don't dislike or I don't, you know, like love him neither. So, um, but got to give credit where credit is due and Joey Savacci. Now, Justin Hill, on the other hand, your 250 rider, a great ride, second place coming in there. Um, Aaron Plessinger, how about AP? 23. Dave Freeze, I, I see your comment. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, Dave Freeze says, did they, to did they find Tomac? Don't think so. So we're going to talk about that here when we get to the 450 section up shortly. Um, Dylan Ferrandez coming to solve fourth. Uh, Mitchell Oldenburg, fifth place. Jimmy Dakotas. Jimmy rode awesome all day long. And, you, I mean, won the heat race, was one of the fastest qualifiers, if not the fastest qualifier Zach Osborne, your champion, got seventh place. Hayden Melross, eighth place. Mitchell Harrison, Cameron McDo uh, is your top ten. Austin Forkner with a twelfth. And Joey Savacci, 14th place there. Uh, so the points break down like this, which is pretty incredible. Zach Osborne, 173 points. How about Adam Censorella? Going into it wasn't even in the talks of the title hunt. It was Jordan Smith. It was Zach Osborne. It was Joey Savacci. There was no Adam Cincerilla. And at one point in time, he could have won that title. With, I think, five to seven laps left, he was there. He actually had the points lead. How in the hell did that happen? That was what 
went down in Las Vegas. I mean, truly incredible riding action. You couldn't have planned it out. Felt Entertainment, the people that own Supercross, couldn't have wrote the script any better. It was a WWE experience. WWE, is that what it's called now? Okay. I used to watch it, it was called WWF. That was when it was real, yeah. So um, Damian Plot says, rad job, Zach, but does everyone know AP was down in the first turn also and podium? Uh, great question, Damian, because honestly, I did not know that. And I've watched this race about twice. Was he uh, tied up in that um, pile up first corner? I'm guessing so. So what an incredible ride. Let's see. Uh, So on the first lap, uh, Aaron Plessinger was 15th place. So absolutely an incredible ride. Um, like I said, and I don't know if I said it about Aaron Plessinger, but it's his ride isn't going to mean anything because of the ride Zach Osborne got. But Zach Osborne came around, and Zach Osborne, he was 21st and made it up to 7th place. So that's 14 positions, 15 up to third, so 12 positions. So Zach Osborne did have a little better ride. Um, obviously, he, he made a few more positions up, but you got to give credit where credit is due on Aaron Plessinger. And that's kind of what we've been looking for out of AP the entire series, and I don't think we've seen it. So maybe he's found something. Maybe the confidence of going into the outdoor series has brought him up to another level that we expect to see AP at. Uh how about we got to talk about Jordan Smith? I know you guys probably seen it. Jordan Smith coming in to from the outside of the, the arena, jumping into that whoop section. I don't know what happened. All you know is you've seen Jordan Smith yard selling at probably Mach 150 miles an hour. Now, I'm joking there, but I think they were hitting speeds about 65, 70 miles an hour. So picture this, you're going in, as wide open as that bike probably is going to go, pretty damn close to it. You launch up and over, you come down, you get squirrely, and you just yard sell, smash that whole so soft Las Vegas dirt. It's probably not feeling pretty good. I tried to do some research, I tried to figure out what happened to Jordan Smith, um, and I don't, don't know, but I got to imagine there's going to be some kind of injuries involved with that. Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully it's not too bad. I doubt we'll see him with that crash unless he just got miraculously lucky. I doubt we'll see him in a few weeks for the outdoor series. All right, we got Andrew on here. Pick a two from FMG. He says, what's up? Uh, you know, Andrew, we're just talking about the boring race that was had in Las Vegas. You might have seen it. You got any thoughts on it, Andrew? What does FMG think about it? Speaking of FMG, Heard you guys had a great time out there at Wildwood MX. They had their uh, FMG ride day out there at Wildwood MX Park. It looked like it was pretty cool. Um, I saw some great pictures. Seen Aiden, I think Aiden Shive throwing down in the whip contest. I'm just trying to rack my brain. I don't know if Donnie was just posting up pictures of Aiden and, uh, and I've seen him on Facebook or he was actually at the FMG. I got myself all confused now. But needless to say, FMG has a crazy whip contest, and it's a pretty cool thing to see. And then even if they weren't together, Aiden was throwing some fat whips on the Super Mini this past weekend, so wherever he was. So Derek Morse, he posted it on Instagram, said no injuries, just really sore. Holy cow, Derek, that is amazing to hear. Um, and I really don't know how I missed that because I actually looked at his Instagram. That is great. Um, I guess it's great work by me. Thumbs down. So, uh, anyhow, wrapping up that 250, I think it's a great time to talk about our Damien plots. And if you guys got anything else you want me to talk about the 250, go ahead and post up and we'll, we'll cover it there. I can see all your comments. Uh, Brian Tipton is uh, texting me, BBTMX, sending me text. Brian, hopefully you're tuned in because I don't have time to talk to you right now. All right, let's see. So our plots MX tip of the week it's going to be this. And for any other tips, our boy Carl Rutledge on here, CEO of Live Ruthless. Carl, share this out. Get us some followers. So, Plots MX, if you guys have any question, uh, 
Make sure you, you check out Damien Plots. You can follow him at Plots and Mex on Facebook, or Damien Plots on Facebook, Plots and Mex on Instagram. I think plotsandmex.com is his website. Send me a message. I will get you in touch with him. He is our resident trainer, um, and he's doing great things out there. So here it is. Plots and Mex tip of the week. This week's tips inspired by a Supercross Finals. Never give up. Go the extra mile. A champion is an individual who may have done one more start, one more practice lap, one more push-up, read one more book about excellence, made one more phone call to a potential sponsor. He or she is the individual that chose veggies as a snack instead of Snickers. I think that was a direct shot at me, Damien. I don't know, but I'm not liking where this is going. Uh, who understands that success is a constant discipline, a way of life rather than a destination of champions. Do what the rest of the pack doesn't bother to do. Come join Plots MX Training where going the extra mile is your lifestyle. Love it. And, and you couldn't have wrote it better. You couldn't have said it better because if you look at Zach Osborne, that's exactly what happened. A kid that puts in the grind every week as our grind MX and a – focus point of our Plots MX uh, training tip of the week, the extra mile. Down there training with Alden Baker. He's putting in the work. He's doing the time. You know, he's training with three top level 450 guys, getting lapped day in, day out of practice to come in and to have a solid ride against 250 classes. Well, if you ride with faster people, you're going to be faster. That's the way it normally goes, okay? So, Damien, we thank you for putting the time and effort in week in, week out, not only with our training tech tips, but you also help a lot of our riders out that we sponsor with the Motostop Trackside Parts and Accessories and, you know, with just our local races. We see Sarah DeRico on here. Where are you guys at, Sarah? They're traveling the country. Um, there is no telling where they're at. Maybe she'll give us an update and we'll see where they're tuning in from right here live on the Motostop Show. Normally on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock tonight, we had to push it back. Uh, but don't forget, we're going to wrap it up by 8 o'clock so we can tune into the NDA Action Weekend Race Report. It's going to be great. Um, they're in SoCal. Sarah DeRico's in SoCal. They got little Mikey and Colton out there ripping around, following them vicariously through Instagram and Facebook. It's pretty cool. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying life because we're enjoying watching you. All right. How about we'll talk about uh, – Nah, I think 250s. We talked enough about them, right? Uh, yeah. Let's jump into the 450s because this is where it's going to get good. The 450 came down to almost it wasn't a, even a chance, but there was a chance. And Eli Tomac and the Monster Energy Kawasaki team went into this thing with a game plan that they were going to hold the rest of the pack up. Eli Tomac being the fastest rider of – We'll say the entire series. And if you don't agree with me, let me know right down there. And I was hoping, I haven't seen him tune in. I was hoping Gabe Gomez would tune in. You guys might know him if you follow any other social media or uh, podcasts or anything like that. His father is El Gringo. Um, he is famous from the Pulp and Mech show. He says, just want to hear the motocross stuff, bro. Something like that. So, uh he posted something up, and I, I liked his thoughts, and I really did like what he was saying about it, but I have a different opinion. <laughs> My boy, slow-ass number 312, pipes in, can I get a SoCal? What? We won't talk about that. It's, Sarah, do you guys listen to Pulp and X show any? Uh, we'll wait. It's a little delayed, so we'll, we'll wait for her to tell us back, and we'll, we'll go on there. But So Tomac's ride. Tomac going into this race. Behind him points, knew that he was probably the fastest rider on the track, but he had to figure out a game plan and what he was going to do to try to track down some points and win this championship. The game plan was to go in, get in the lead, slow the race pace down, bunch up the riders so stuff could happen. And I got to tell you, Eli Tomek executed this game plan to a T. He could have won a Super Bowl with how well he played this game, okay? So Dave Freeze just said Tomac was the fastest but was begging to get behind Dungey. Well, 
So he he was the fast, fastest, and he wasn't trying to really get behind Dungey per se. He actually wanted to bunch Dungey up. He wanted to bring the rest of the pack into the race, um, and then if Dungey passed him, he was passing him back, therefore using what Dungey called the cheap shots. Let me know what you guys think about that because I got a whole nother two hours we're going to talk about on that. Um, Damian Plot says, I'd love to know how many fans wish E.T. just went out and killed it and won by like a minute. Probably a lot, Damian. And here's what I, here's my thought, mind process. And Damian knows me uh, pretty well as an Eli Tomac fan and a Kawasaki guy. Eli Tomac could have went out there and very easily cleaned Ryan Dungey out. But I think I have more respect for him as a rider, racer, fan of his now, going out there and doing what he did because he tried to control the race. Okay, He did it in a very um, controlled way, which I don't know how because if you look at Zach Osborne, you know, he had that mentality, I'm going to win, fight or flight, right? So he's taking you out, be killed or, or kill, and he killed. So Tomac didn't have that. Tomac, and maybe it's the age, maybe it's the... It's not, there's not a big age difference between Zach Osborne and Eli Tomac, but maybe it's the the level of riding and the riders he's riding with that changed it. So he tried to do and control everything he possibly could with the race by not just eliminating Tomac. Now, he did do some slowdowns. He did brake check. Um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough. It almost worked. As you guys can see in the race, he bunched everybody up. He brought Chad Reed into the picture. He brought Jason Anderson in the picture. Josh Grant was right there coming back up in there. Now, I would hate to see what happened if Josh Grant, the number 33 on uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki, got up there and put it to, jo- to Ryan Dungey because it wouldn't have been good. Chris Crawford says, RD couldn't hang. Why cry of cheap shots? No block passes if you aren't in the lead. That's true. So RD couldn't hang. Why cry of cheap shots? No block passes if you are in the lead. 100%. You know, if he got in the lead and he checked out, then it wouldn't even been talked about. Um, so it, it's kind of when Ryan Dungey, for those of you guys who don't know, Ryan Dungey, right when he got off, and I know it, emotions are running, tensions are high, but Dungey says, oh, those cheap shots. I, I didn't think this race was going to go like that. There was cheap shots. What the hell did you think was going to happen? You're coming in and going for a title in the 450 class, the most premier class in motocross, supercross, dirt bike racing. You didn't think a guy was going to brake check you and push you high in a berm? You're lucky that you're still walking and your tibs and fibs ain't freaking snapped off. That's what you're lucky of because with the shit you pulled, cheap shot at going into wherever Salt Lake it was or New York, and you go around your teammate, I get it, team tactics, I'm okay, blah, 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 blah. But then don't cry, cheap shots. And I think you guys got well aware of that when the crowd started booing him. The whole however many people was in Sam Boyd Stadium let them know about what his comments and the cheap shots were. They weren't happy with it. So, yeah, I, I one, wasn't happy with his comments. Um, what do you guys think? Did you think the Eli Tomac cheap shots were cheap shots? Or did you think it was good hard racing? Because I liked it. I think it was good hard racing one myself. And how about Jason Anderson getting the win? Obviously, the win's going to have a little asterisk next to it, those who follow the race and watch it closely. But on paper, Jason Anderson has a 450 win there in that class. So Eli Tomac coming in second with Josh Grant, and I saw it third place. You got to give credit where credit is due with Josh Grant. What a phenomenal ride by that guy right there. You know, he went out, he executed, he did almost everything he had to do. He got in front of Ryan Dungey, and he, uh, besides a direct missile towards Ryan Dungey, he, he put it up, probably the best ride. It was the best ride of the season, coming around eighth place off the first lap. He, uh, you know, put it up there on the podium. See how the points broke down. So Ryan Dungey beat Eli Tomac by 300, or it was 359 points to 354 points. So a five-point separation there. Now, we know in Salt Lake City there was three points given to him. That same race, was it Salt Lake City? No. New York City, right? New York City? New York City, right? Somebody agree with me? Sure. All right, they agreed. So good. So New York City. 
New York City is when Marvin Muskin pulled over, gave him the three points. Now, Josh Grant was in front of Eli Tomac. So if Grant would have pulled over, that would have gave Josh or Eli Tomac one more point. So now we're talking about going into this race. And if the would have happened the way it did, there would have only been a one-point separation. And I truly believe, if you guys seen, you know, with uh, if Chad Reed didn't get taken out, that would have been the separator. This title would have been completely different. We would have seen a different, completely different champion going in there. But, I mean, don't take anything away from Ryan Dungey. Ryan Dungey won the title. Off with it. Mr. Consistency does it again. Um, you know, the guy that won the title won three races this year. The guy that got second in the title won nine. Who was the fastest rider? Who was the best rider? In my eyes, my books, on my paper, I'm putting Eli Tomek all day long. But on the record books, it says Ryan Dungey. What do you guys think? Dave Free says pure strategy. It was strategy, and I, I kind of liked it. So to go back and rewind and talk about that strategy a little bit, Dave, what about – how to learn how to ride different. How many times have you went out there and practiced literally just controlling the pace of the race? Now, for us in the amateur ranks, going around the local stuff, it probably doesn't really matter. But take a rider at the pro level um, and you go out there and you say, okay, well, I have to control this race because my goal is to bring the rest of the pack up. Normally, I'm beating these guys by 6, 7, 30 seconds. So now I have to control the race, keep the guy in second place behind me, and let the rest of the pack come up. So, I mean, you want to talk about a pure badass on a motorcycle? Eli Tomac. I mean, he did it and almost executed it perfect. Obviously, he's not the champion, but it was, uh, it was a great try. So Jason Anderson in that uh, – well, Jason Anderson got fourth place in the points this year. Marvin Muski in third. Eli Tomac second. And your champion, 450 reigning title champion, is Ryan Dungey. So your podium, Chris Crawford says, it was a major strategy. Did you hear RC and Fro talking about how Dunge was turning it up and pulling him in? Was I the only one that knew what he was doing? Chris, that's another whole s story. The damn announcers on the radio, and I don't know if it's just because I announced it at races or what, but I, I agree with you. And I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? Do you not see Eli Tomac literally, like, not being Eli Tomac, checking up and just barely riding to keep the pace there? I mean, what did you think that Josh Grant, who I think his best finish was like sixth or seventh this year, maybe a fifth, I didn't look it up, but somewhere in there, that now all of a sudden he's pressing the 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 – two fastest, the title contenders in the last round. Uh, Kawasaki just threw a supercharger on that thing. Or how about Chad Reed? Yamaha just figured out a setting where now he's as fast as the, the title contenders. I, I agree with you. It, it's, it was completely ludicrous. And they didn't say anything about it, you know. They didn't say anything about strategy. They did say, well, if Josh Grant gets up there, yeah, if he gets up there, but how is he getting up there? Is he just turned it up? He wicked it up that fast? At 48 years old. I don't know what that means, Chris. Is that how old you are or what? <laughs> I'm confused right now. So uh, um, I apologize. I don't, I'm trying to put a name with the face, Chris Crawford, but it ain't, it ain't registering in my head right now. Oh, Reedy. <laughs> the ripe age of 48 years old. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, he's a young 35. Five years old, I think now, actually. So, uh, yeah. All right, so uh, rounding out your top five, how about a fifth-place ride for Dean Wilson? Solid ride right there. Um, and Chad Reed, even after getting taken out, comes back to a sixth place. And uh, Blake Bag is seventh. Davey Millsaps, eighth place. Ninth place going to Justin Brayton. And a tenth place, Cooper Webb. Man, Cooper Webb, I don't know what to think of that guy. Phenomenal rides at times. Then he goes back and it's... Just a 10th place ride. He's not a 10th place guy. It's it, There's something missing there, whether it's the bike. And it could be the bike because, you know, on Chad Reed off nights, 
Cooper Webb normally puts in great nights. When Chad Reed is putting in good nights, Cooper Webb is normally farther back in the pack. He's not a 10th place guy. Dave Free says, slowing the pace wasn't enough. He knew he had to get behind Dungey and take him out. That was his only chance. I agree, Dave, but what do you think about the way he did it? I mean, do you think he should have went in there and cleaned his clock? Do you think he should have, uh, you know, Josh Grant, Mookie, Malcolm Stewart, do you think he should have went Justin Barsha style on him? By the way, somebody posted up a screenshot, uh, Hunter Hawkins, a screenshot of Justin Barsha. Said, need you to go in and clean out Dungey for, for Tomac. Um, or do you have more respect, Dave, for Eli Tomac now that he went in? He tried to race him. He raced him hard. He played the game, don't get me wrong. But he didn't play to injure anybody. He didn't go out to hurt anybody. And they're both going to be able to go into the Supercross or the uh, Outdoor Series healthy. Uh, like I said, I have more respect for Ryan Dungey than that. Imagine the AMA if ET slowed down, then cleaned out RD. Yeah, I, I don't know. What would the AMA do? I mean, double fine Eli Tomac. Honestly, it's a joke, you know. Um, it's a good question because... Damien, and maybe you know, I don't know if you read the rule book, AMA rule book recently, but I did look before I came, and I don't see anything in there. It says fixing a race, okay? Fixing a race. Well, Zach Osborne didn't fix the race. He took advantage of a situation and won the, and won the championship. Dungey rode smart, so Tomac didn't get the opportunity. Now, I think that was Dave Freeze that just commented that. I can't see. Do you really believe that? It was Dave. Do you really believe that Dungey rode smart? Because all he had to do was finish behind Eli Tomac. So it didn't matter if Eli Tomac slowed down to 20th place. All he had to do was finish right behind him. He wins the title. Why in the hell would he pass him? So did Dungey really ride smart? No, Dungey actually I think probably was the worst race of his entire life, the way he did it. Um, pushing, being aggressive, and trying to get up front. I think he was trying to make a statement to Eli Tomac for what Eli Tomac said on the, the post-race interview or the press, press, uh, press day interview. And if you guys didn't see it, somebody asked him, said, hey, Eli Tomac, how was it when you heard about Ryan Dungey and Marvin Muska and Marvin pulling over and, and Dungey passing you? And he goes, well, you know, it was actually hard to watch because, you know, if it does come down to those three points, it's going to suck for the fans. Uh, but... If you want to take that home and sleep on that at night, that's your prerogative. It's kind of what he said. And I think that fired up Dungeon. I think Dungeon wanted to make a point. Well, it, it didn't get across too well. John Mortenberg said, it was so awesome to watch him in the stadium. Mortenberg was there. Um, John Mortenberg also says, I think Dungeon did ride smart. He was worried about Reed and Grant. Slow down and let them go past you. I mean, that's, that's what I would say. I mean, you're a top-level rider. You're worried about them. You hit the brakes going into a corner, and they just go straight by you. Now what's going to happen? I mean, you know, all you got to do is get right behind Eli Tomac. So I think it was a heat of the moment, racing environment, not able to, uh, to slow it back. But nor here nor there. We weren't there. We're not – Maybe some of us, maybe some of us on here are. I'm not as good as those pros, so only, you know, they know what happened. I can tell you one thing, though. Carl Rutler says, that's chump change for Jacko. He's a legend after that pass. It, it, he is, dude. And, I mean, like I said, Rockstar Energy Husqvarna paid that without question. The $7,500 I mean, they spend that on hotels and flights to get to a race, so for them to throw that in is no question. Um, and if they didn't, Zacco would pay that happily. You know, probably racking in, like I said, four to 500000 just from that uh, championship. But now with that being said, Chris, i seen that. Somebody said that. Uh, and I don't know if they were serious or not on Facebook. I hope not. Chris Crawford said, should we start a GoFundMe for, Jack, for, uh, for Osborne? Did everybody see Grant let E.T. over by the finish line? I did not, uh, Dave, or, uh, Damian Plotz. Dungey had opportunities to pass him, but he definitely didn't want to be in front of him. Good race total. 
uh, chess match. It was. Carl Rutledge says, money for days. Is that a song? Oh, no, money for nothing and checks for free. Bam! So, 2017 series wrapped up, and I don't think we could have wrapped it up in a better way because, like I said, it was truly amazing. I've watched the race three times. I cannot wait to get home and watch it again. I know uh, my wife is probably tired of me watching it. It doesn't matter if I'm in the house or the living room or the, the bedroom. I'm, it's got it on. But it's that time we get to turn the table. And the going gets tough, and the tough get going. We're going to the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship Outdoor Series coming up. I'm stoked. This is where I believe if you're a passionate person about motocross, casual fans watch Supercross. I think if you're a casual fan, you're sitting on the couch, you're flipping through, and you look, and this comes on, you probably don't stop because most of the time it doesn't look that exciting unless you ride dirt bikes. But going to the outdoors it is going to be sick. Now, with everybody getting their steam, they got, you know, confidence coming off. You can't be more confident than Eli Tomac coming off a nine, nine wins, lost New York, but coming back and dominating Las Vegas. Obviously, we've all seen what he did. The uh, uh, Pro Circuit Kawasaki team, phenomenal riding coming up to it. Frankie says Red Bud. We all know what happens at Red Bud. It goes down like a party there everywhere. Okay, so we're going to kick off the season May 20th, Hangtown Motocross Classic, and then May 27th, Glen Helen National. I got to give a shout out to Jim uh, from Grind MX. Carl calls him Arbor Nasty. He actually tried to get me to go out to Glen Helen this, this year. He sent me a text, I believe it was either today or yesterday. He says, hey, Let's go to Glenn and cover this race. And I'm like, eh, I don't think I can make it happen. Um, but May 27th is going to be Glenn Helen. June 3rd, Thunder Valley National. June 7th, or June 17th, High Point. June 24th is going to be the Tennessee Muddy Creek National. July 1st, Redbud. July 8th, Southwick. Oh, I love me some Southwick where the sand's going to be flying and the motors are going to be blowing. July 22nd, Spring Creek. July 29th, Washougal. August 12th, Unadilla. August 19th, Bud's Creek. And August 26th is the Iron Man in Indiana. So uh, we do have a great laid out schedule here for us. Give you guys a uh, bam. Can you see that? Bam. Rutledge says he's ready to hang on that fence on the outdoors. Mark Carley just joined. Carl Rutledge said, Arbo Nasty. So, yeah, we do got an exciting series coming up. And, again, I'm uh, keeping this show a little short and sweet just so we can sign off and we can sign back on to NDA Action Sports. Uh, love that we're both kind of combined and doing this thing together. I love uh, that we met up and talked to Poi Dog and uh, everything he's doing. I actually got to see Paul Fleming this weekend, and I got to race at Dade City. I threw down some uh, laps in the night race. I don't know if uh, you call it racing, but I went around the track a few times. Um, Paul Fleming was on the microphone. He was probably making fun of me, but whatever. It was probably a good time. Frankie says, I think a lot of us Florida boys should get together and take a trip to Red Bud and race. Frankie, if there's dirt bikes involved... Road trips and racing, I'm your guy. So sign me up wherever we got to go. A film crew. We have a film crew. We have a resident film crew with the most state-of-the-art technology. You might have heard of these people. They're kind of a little deal thing. Maybe they're called Big Deal Productions. Uh, but, yeah, it is amazing. We'll, uh, we'll see about getting that done. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop myself. I don't think I can. Because I think there's a Waldo, I think the Waldo um, Faith MX Camp is that weekend. Bobby, if Bobby's on here, Bobby might know about that. Damien says, now that we're, now that I'm Florida, we really need a national down here. Damien, you coming out of retirement? Dave Freeze, Tomac's going to win outdoors, words on it. Uh, absolutely, I got my money on Tomac. 
how Roxon, the word on Roxon is going to be definitely not for outdoors. Um, next year, Supercross is questionable at this time. So he's still got a lot of recovery and actually potential more surgeries to go. So Aiden work on there. Big deal what? Big deal production. That's what. Without an S. Big deal production. End it at input.com. You're good to go. Damien Plotz. Uh, yeah. So that's that's what we were talking about. What were we talking about? Oh, Waldo. I think the a really cool thing that Waldo MX Sports does out there is they have a yearly moto fa- or uh, a, a moto camp that's faith based with some great trainers and great people, and uh, they they ask us to come out. So I think we'll be there again this year. Um, I don't know. I'll get the dates exactly, but we'll find that out. Uh, John Morenberg, Chris and Craig should do well outdoors. I, you one would think, John, but, man, he was not impressive in Supercross, and he's got the talent and the skill to pay the bills, and he just didn't get it done. So I don't know how good Chris and Craig's going to do out there. I love you guys with your comments in here. This, this is what I'm talking about. This gives me the stuff to feed off and talk about. So you guys keep posting up. I can see all of them. I want to talk a lot about this stuff. Um, we did have a great weekend for the Florida Georgia Championship out at Dade City Raceway. Like I said, they kicked it off with the Saturday night race in Dade City Raceway, the world famous. Paul Fleming and crew was out there. I threw some boots on, strapped up on the old Kawasaki and threw down. Great time. Come to the Sunday race. We had some huge gates, uh, almost 300 riders there. And you want to talk about incredible. Barry was out there throwing down. Um, it, was, it was just tremendously a great race. The Dade City crew did a great job. They revamped the track, opened up the back part, and it was some literally great race in action. Bar banging, throwing down, whip slinging all day long. Eric Parham. Here late, y'all see Osborne was fine for the last lap? Yes, sir, Eric, we did see that. Um, And if you tune in about 47 minutes and 32 seconds ago, you'll hear us talking about it. No, just kidding. Uh, Giuseppe, I appreciate that. CJ is just the coolest. Who is Giuseppe? Goose, Goose, our boy over there. (laughs) I should have known that. I bet the French dude kills it on in the 250s. Uh, yeah, he probably will, Damien. Don't forget, uh, Eric, if you did just join late, you can always check out. If you don't feel like watching it on Facebook, you can go to our Motostop Show. It's called themotostopshow.com. There's a link right there to our live videos, to our live Facebook page. Like it, subscribe. There's also a link to all of our Facebook pages. Make sure you're getting the updates because we post, even though you see this here, This isn't the full edited version. If you go back and look, we put other stuff in uh, our videos, which something we're going to put in there, something really cool that we did last week. We went down to our boys in Jacksonville, uh, 904 904 Performance and Garage Zero started a cool thing a while back called Wheelie Wednesday. They all get together and they do um, some great race, or not racing, they do wheelies. I mean, they do riding. They take a ride through Jacksonville streets. Um, we got some cool footage of that, which will be edited into our final cut. So you guys make sure you check out that the first Wednesday of every month, our boys up there, Curtis and Ross, uh, you guys, longtime friends of mine, been riding with them guys literally since probably 2005, six, I mean, back in the day. So, uh, yeah, make sure you check it out up in Jacksonville, Willie Wednesday. Sarah said, what about, um, the arena cross? Yeah, Sarah, there's a – it was good. It was really good. It's so hard for me. I wrote – I have all kind of notes about this arena cross. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, I really don't even want to talk about it because I feel so bad for Jace Owens, who I believe was the best guy all year long, but just with that points resets. And, again, I know going into the series, that's how it's going to be. But, man, does that not suck? You're the most winning rider. You have the title points. Then halfway, not even halfway, over halfway, it's erased and done. Carl Addison Emery, the 385, uh, missed it by one one thing in the LCQ. I think he got fifth place in the LCQ. I'm just going off memory, guys, here. Robert Pax here. Welcome, Robert. Oh, the famous owner of Pax Track in Bunnell, Florida. That's right. 
Uh, Robert just says the next race at PAX Track MX. Kyle has a track dialed in. Robert, you're right, May 21st. That's where we're going, the Florida Georgia Champion, the Florida MX. Headed down there, it's going to be a huge time. Literally now in my backyard, so I'm going to sleep in my own bed. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, yeah, Sarah, John, John and Logan, they both did amazing. I needed to call John today. I was just busy and I didn't get a chance. Uh, I seen some of his posts. Uh, you guys know our little boy, Logan Mortenberg, the 317, not our little boy anymore. Hell, he's probably about this tall now. Uh, he went out there and he threw down and he just did not have the results he wanted. And I know John's probably heartbroken, but sometimes those hard results will pay off in the long run. So uh, you got to make sure you, you focus on the positive, John's, and not the negative, which I'm sure you know. But it's hard when you go out there and you race all uh, – Spent all that money. Yeah, he did ride amazing. I watched as much as I could, the photos, videos, and live time, and he was sick. So, um, Carl Rutledge. Hey, Carl, maybe we can get you down there to the PAX track. You know, that Florida-Georgia championship series that you uh, you sponsor? Maybe, boy. Hey. Hey. What, 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 what? On fly? LiveRuthless.com? Uh, Carl's going to... Carl's going to pull my sponsorship now. Colton DeRico almost walked away with the win and sent that triple. I didn't even see that. Sarah's bragging on Logan, and I didn't even get to see Colton's stuff. I'm sure little Colt Colt kills it everywhere he goes, so um, no doubt. I wish I was there. Got to go last year, but unfortunately this year I didn't. So, Carl Rutledge, you are officially dead to me. Done. Cut off. Done. All right, so now, hey, if anybody's looking to sponsor a great spokesperson with clothing line, I just became available. I'm a very good looking man. I wear a slim 34 pants, a nice large shirt. I make all your gear look good, whether it's in my muscles, my skills, or just my butt, whatever. Uh, yeah, CJ's available. Carl's not happy right now. Oh, Dave Freeze coming in with a kill. Who's Carl? Never heard of the guy before. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Keyword almost. Yeah, I, Sarah, again, same thing. You guys know. You guys out there chasing your dream. So uh, don't, don't let that hold you back. We're wrapping in on 8 o'clock. I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about. Again, don't forget... Grind MX, a great supporter of ours, even though I'm picking on Carl. Carl from LiveRuthless.com. Plots MX, follow, like them. These guys do a lot for us. So even if you don't purchase anything, just go out there, say thank you, give them a share, like on their Facebook. Make sure you like our page. We get continuous updates. Uh, we have a, uh, next week we're going to take off. Woo, we get a breather, a day off. But uh, we'll be back after the first round of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross with a lot to talk about. I got a special guest that we're trying to line up and get in studio. So you definitely do not want to miss that. It's going to be a great time, and it's not even Goose. It's somebody that's really cool. So uh, ouch. he says, ouch, it's okay. Um, March 21st is PAX Track. May 21st, not March Take me back, will you? Take me back. Hey, we do have race fuel at PAX and a full pro shop, so anything you need. Uh, PAX Trap has Sunoco race fuel. They got J3 in stock. They have uh, pretty much bars, levers, everything you need. So um, while you're there, Thursday's open practice, I believe, Robert. Saturday, I think Thursday is or 12 to 5. Uh, 12 to 5, I think, on open practice, and then normally on Saturday and Sundays, it's like from 9 to 2 or 9 to 3, um, and then Sunday's normally like same thing. So, CJ Rosa, the kid with the best name on the track, no matter where you go, CJ, you always have the best name. Just know that. Says it's his home track, so he's going to be throwing down. He's been out there training as well with Kyle Farnell. Um, I got to give a shout out as well to Dean Diaz. Uh, little Dean went out to Vegas and helped out his riders out there, so Big shout out to them. We got, dude, I'm telling you what, you know, Damian Plotz, our resident in-house trainer at Plotz and Max, we love the guy, but in the state of Florida, we literally right now have probably the best trainers in the whole country. So after that, we're going to head off to uh, May, June 4th. It's going to be Boswick Creek. Uh, June 25th, we'll head to Reddick. 
And July 2nd, we're going to go to Orlando. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Check them out. All joint races with the Florida MX Series. Huge gates, stacked racing. If you want to come and race with the best in Florida, the Florida Georgia Championship and the Florida Motocross places where to be. Don't forget to tune in. Coming up right after this at 8.30, NDA Action Sports, Poi Dog. Paul Fleming is going to put on a great show. They break down a lot of the local racing stuff. I'm going to be on there. Hopefully, I can put in some input through the comments, um, and maybe we'll even try to call in, see if they'll answer my phone call. I don't know. but Because uh, we got a great insight of the racing that happened at Dade City. Chris Jeffrey says, Mish, man, wish we could be at PAX, but we are holding up for the qualifiers. Road to Loretta's hashtag. Chris, we understand you guys are road warriors, and as well as Jessica and Nathan rode this weekend. Um, you don't. You shouldn't even have to go qualify. You just send a picture in and the, a video of how well they rode, and Loretta said she you a ticket because your kids were on fire this weekend. So it's about 8 o'clock. We're going to wrap this thing up. We kept it short to an hour. We hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been fun. we got to thank everybody who did it. Adam Roy, all you guys that tuned in, everybody that put comments in there, we thank you guys. It's been a blast. Make sure you tune in. We're off next week, but we'll be a week after that. Big Deal Productions, we appreciate you. Tom, Dennison, Brian, Douglas, the guy in the corner, Goot. Hey, come here. Tom Dennison, just, this is pretty come epic. Come over here. He shows up literally at the last, you. I, I know how to make an entry. You do? Yeah. The show's over and you literally just walked in. Yeah. I hope it was good. Well, what I watched. That is why he is the executive producer. I'm sure. He made sure it was good. No. <laughs> Not even a little. <laughs> He's smart enough. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Frankie, thank you. Um, so you guys, as always, thank you for tuning in. Help us grow. Help us like. Share. Even if you've already watched it, go to our YouTube page. Click the like button. It helps. Gives us thumbs up. Send it out to everybody. I know we're begging for you guys to do it now, but just do it! All right. CJ, best name on the planet. It's been real. It's been fun. I'm your host, CJ Harris. That's CJ Rosa on your screen. We'll see you guys next time right here from the Motostop Show and the Big Deal Productions. Peace out.